Good morning. It's great to see you here at Grace United Methodist Church in Lake Bluff, Illinois, with our Sunday worship service. Wonderful to see everyone, and if you would, uh, fill in your attendance, little attendance form on the first page of the bulletin, and drop that in the offering plate as it comes by, and just a few announcements. Uh, greetings to everyone watching via Zoom. I noticed that uh, Bill Atherton is with us again. Bill, we're glad that you're doing well and glad that you're with us. And uh, let's see. Oh, today is uh, Kids Fifth Sunday, so it's uh, Kids Above All. There's an offering uh, for that. So again, designate that. Put put that in an envelope if you want to uh, donate to um, Kids Above All. Put it in the plate. We have the great privilege of. Mr. Anders Johnson performing the postlude today. We're very glad to have you here, Anders, and glad you'll be doing that. What a family, and all his talent in the one, one family, that's fantastic. And, in, and his sister was, the, uh, was our acolyte, so absolutely wonderful. You'll notice that we, if you haven't noticed already, the first passage that will be read is from Romans, and it's really long. Um, why didn't I abbreviate it? I tried to, but it's hard to take anything out of that passage without leaving out something important. Romans 8 is probably one of the greatest chapters in all of Scripture, and with so many practical uh, things about the, the Christian life and so forth, I'll be preaching on that uh, today. But that's why um, it is so long. I, I, I like it so much, I would recommend if you want to take your bulletin home with you, just take it home and, you know, put it on the, the refrigerator door, it's a, you can refer to it a lot and get all sorts of things out of it each time you read it. The Crosstown Classic is still going on, Sox versus Cubs, and so if you have breakfast items, I believe it is breakfast, is that right? Breakfast items, please leave those in the boxes out there. Um, we are looking for an office volunteer, two to three hours at a time. If you're interested in doing that, you don't have to know the computer or anything. It'd be like answering phones and just being a presence here. If you're interested in that, call Molly um, and uh, let her know that you'd be willing to do that or talk about it. And uh, we still need liturgists and fellowship hosts for the rest of the summer. And now, let us prepare our hearts for worship. Please stand as you are able and join our call to worship. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name and make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him. Sing praises to him. Tell of all his wonderful works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek, seek the, the Lord and his strength. strength. Seek his, his presence continually. Remember the wonderful works he has done. The Lord, the Lord is mindful, mindful of his covenant forever, of the word that he has commanded for a thousand generations. generations. Please remain standing.
our opening prayer. Most generous God, we worship and praise you for the many ways you express your love for us. We are thankful that nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. Keep us mindful that all things work together for good for those who love you. If you are for us, who can be against us? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may sit. As Reverend Kell mentioned, our first reading today is from Paul. Among his Pauline letters, first set in the New Testament, is his letter to the Romans, which he actually wrote about halfway through. He wrote his letters between about 48 and 64 AD. He started about 12 years after he joined the church. He began during, uh, after Christ's lifetime and after he was a persecutor of Christians while he was a tax collector for the Romans. So we start today with Romans chapter 8, verses 26 through 39. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we ought. But that very spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the spirit. Because the spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good, for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family, and those whom he predestined he also called, and those whom he called, he also justified, and those whom he justified, he glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died. Yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God and indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or the sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, or anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. So said St. Paul. 
our gospel reading today, you will recognize from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13, verses 31 through 32. A very small reading. He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all seeds. But when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field, which someone found and hid. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I thank Mike for his comment on the gospel passage. Romans was so long, it's like I, I couldn't include the whole gospel passage. And uh, they are very similar uh, parables, so that's why it was uh, shorter. Uh, I forgot to announce, we have some visitors here today. We have Barbara, who is in the back there. Welcome, Barbara. I think she is new to our neighborhood. Great to have you here. And Darcy, it looks like someone new next to you. Is that, is that, uh, who is that? Your grandmother, wonderful, great to have you here. Fantastic. All right, this is the time when we come together and share our joys and concerns and then pray as a church family. Uh, Kathy Pearson, the last I heard is that she is at home and uh, the pain is subsiding. Anybody have an update on Kathy? Okay, great, thank you. Um, Bill, who is with us today, is uh, home now and is progressing well. Glad to hear that. Uh, Karen Bushko, she was going to try to make it today. She is doing much better, and the doctors had corrected what was uh, the issue with her. She sounded great on the phone, and she thanks everyone for the cards and well wishes. And let's keep praying for Nancy with her tests. Hopefully they're coming up soon and her brother Matt, and Amanda, and Jim, and uh, Maureen, and Mark. And last week we, pl we prayed for a Kathleen, a grandmother with internal bleeding. Who was that? Who had that prayer request? Oh, 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 that was you, oh good, and you're here today. Wonderful, oh, fantastic. An answer to prayer, <laughs> wonderful, great. All right, what, what joys and concerns do you have today? Anything at all? Uh, I just want to say uh, thanks for your prayers for my daughter Amanda. She did get a new job now. Oh. She starts in a few weeks uh, for a, uh, administering a, a building. And uh, my wife's brother, Matt, has uh, graduated from his chemotherapy. So they had a celebration at the hospital with that so uh, and of course he has no hair now but otherwise he's doing much better wonderful Thanks. thank wonderful. you very much so amanda has a job now we've been praying about that and and matt is um nancy's brother has concluded his chemo fantastic great news up here for malcolm uh, we have a concern for our daughter katie who is uh, flying to maui tomorrow with her dog and her car should arrive shortly afterwards and um, we would just ask for your prayers for her safety thank you all right praying for katie who is on her way to maui with her car and her dog very good yeah i'm going to ask for prayers for my mom her name is georgia um, on Thursday, they did a biopsy of a place on her left leg that has not been healing. We have to wait 10 days, they tell us, to find out whether it's related to her diabetes or whether there's something else going on in that place that will not heal. So oh. thank you for your prayers for Georgia. Okay. Let's keep Georgia in our prayers. 
uh, biopsy on an issue with uh, her leg. I, I was just uh, uh, very happy to see the big effort that Lake Bluff uh, made yesterday on with the uh, Centurion bike racing. I thought that was very interesting. Now, are you out there with your bike competing? No. no oh, okay. <laughs> thought I would have seen Mary Jane out there. Wonderful. Others? All right, let's pray together. Holy God, many times we do not know how to pray, but Jesus invites us into the life he shares with you and the Holy Spirit. In our in true communion, we come to you now. Lord, you have blessed us, made in your image, with understanding and the ability to choose the good. Give to all leaders and people a vision of your world made whole, the wisdom to pursue it, and the will to accomplish it. We pray for your church all over the world that we would plant seeds of life where life has become barren. May the joy we discover in you continue to bind us to one another and to the world we love. Give us wisdom and courage beyond our imagining. You have given your world the gift of Jesus to transform our pain into healing and hope. Be with all who suffer hardship, distress, or are in need. And help us to honor you by serving together as we grow in the mercy and compassion of Christ. And now we bring your own joys and concerns. We're glad that Kathy is home, and we pray that uh, her pain issue may be resolved completely. We're thankful that Bill is with us today and that he is progressing. We are grateful that Karen is progressing very well and uh, thankful to all of those who have kept in touch with her. And we pray for uh, Nancy with the, the test may be upcoming soon. But we're so glad that uh, Matt has completed his chemotherapy. What wonderful news. And we're so grateful that Amanda now has a job too. And we pray for Jim and Maureen and Mark. And uh, Lord, we pray for Katie as she travels to Maui with her dog and the car. We pray that everything arrives there safely and that she enjoy her new practice there. We pray for Georgia and we pray that this uh, biopsy uh, may be handled uh, quickly and efficiently. And Lord, we just uh, pray that it be resolved very soon. And we are thankful for Lake Bluff and this great bike race that they have, another kind of community uh, gathering event. And um, it is always so great to see these things happen and so many people come out for them. Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed. It is so small, yet when it is grown, it becomes a tall, full tree. So the birds come and make nests in its branches. Empower us to nurture the growth of your kingdom as Jesus did. We offer now together the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We will now receive your tithe as an offering.
Gracious Lord, receive these offerings from this community of believers that endeavors to grow in Christ and serve him. Guide our church in expressing your love to those around us. Amen. You may be seated. done before I did. Oh, sorry. <laughs> was really into it this morning. He wanted to keep going. He's out there making up his own lyrics. It's kind of strange in um, that black hymnal. Uh, sometimes different versions have a different number of uh, verses as uh, Tim can attest to. Let's pray. Spirit of life, meet us in these words. God used several people in my life to confirm that call. 
And of course, I have had numerous discoveries in my nine years of pastoring, especially when preparing messages or getting to know people or encouraging folks through a difficult time. All of these discoveries have been wonderful because something new is revealed each time, and I sense God drawing me closer and closer to him. Curiosity leading to discovery is not a neutral process. Significant discoveries produce growth. Of course, this happens in all sorts of discoveries in life. And the process really does work. I feel that I am more faithful as a disciple of Jesus today than I was last year. Next year, I trust I will be more mature spiritually than I am this year. This maturity, at least in part, is due to that pattern. Curiosity, discovery, growth. Our gospel passage today, as abbreviated as it is, um, extend, uh, which extends beyond what was read, uh, I thought we would cut it back. Uh, but there are two um, parables here about the kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven, as Matthew calls it. We have parables of growth. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed which is the smallest of the seeds, or among the smallest. <clears throat> this small seed grows into great shrubs. It becomes a tree so big that birds can make their nests in the ground. So growth. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast. A woman mixes it with three measures of flour until all of it is leavened. We're all familiar with dough rising because of yeast. In this case, the woman is using 50 pounds of dough. I kind of picture the I Love Lucy episode where <laughs> opening the oven and this, this great big uh, uh, like 30 foot log of loaf of bread comes up. So in both cases, something small grows into something very large. We also have parables of discovery. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in the field which someone found and hid in the joy of this exhilarating accidental discovery sells all that he has and buys that field. The kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Growth and discovery. So Jesus says the kingdom of heaven on earth is a place of discovery and growth that leads to our leaving behind our old ways of thinking and doing things. That pattern, curiosity, discovery, growth. Do you get the idea that I want you to remember that? Yeah, I'm repeating it every time. And the Christian life helps us mature as believers. Like the mustard seed, we grow from humble beginnings to develop into a great tree, a true disciple of Jesus. But right now, the kingdom of heaven is somewhere between the seed and the great tree. What happens when that pattern of curiosity, discovery, and growth is interrupted or seems to break down? Last week, we saw how the Apostle Paul proclaims that we are joint heirs with Christ and, in, and all that we will inherit, what Christ inherits, we will inherit. But we are tempted to think there are many days when I don't feel like I am a joint heir with Christ. Why is that? And last week, from the parable of the wheat and the weeds, we learned that right along with healthy, productive wheat, God does not hold the weeds in our lives, but lets them grow, too. Everything from found in crises to the things hoped for that do not come to pass. The challenge is, as we said last week, whether or not we can look past the suffering and disappointment and injustice whether or not we can get past of all the weeds, especially our ultimate future in the fulfilled kingdom. Today, we might ask, is there any help we can count on from God to get us through the weeds? I think that is what Paul is addressing in the passage from Romans that Mike read. And as I said earlier, it is one of the greatest passages in all of Scripture. 
Last week, Paul makes the spectacular claim that we are joint heirs with Christ. Incredibly profound, but we but uh, something we may not be able to relate to or sink our teeth into. What does it mean for you to be an heir along with Christ? In today's passage, we have something much more concrete and hopefully something we can grasp more easily. First of all, many times we do not know how to pray for something as we are with something we are going through, especially for something that affects a loved one, I find. Paul says we do not know how to pray, but in our weakness, when we have no words to express our weakest feelings, the Holy Spirit intercedes for us with sighs to the four words. Have you heard that before? It's one of the wonderful truths in Scripture. The Holy Spirit is praying for you. The Spirit, as one writer comments, comes to our rescue and acts as an intermediary between us and God to put our inarticulate thoughts into words. As we recall the Gospel of John, where Jesus says the Holy Spirit is our advocate. The Spirit prays for us according to the will of God. So he not only prays for us, but he prays the right things for what God wants in our lives. And this is one thing um, I find very interesting about our Roman Catholic brothers. Uh, I don't want to criticize them, but I've always wondered why do they pray to saints when they can pray to God, the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, God himself is praying for you. I still don't quite understand that. On top of that, God searches our innermost being. From one of my favorite psalms, the Lord, Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. And it goes on and on like this. It's psalm 139. A wonderful psalm. If you ever feel abandoned by God, open your Bible to Psalm 139. It goes on like that, and it shows that God knows us intimately. In addition, Paul says, all things work together for good. For those who love God are called according to his purpose. I know many ask, do all things really work together for good? Really? I think that's a very good question. How can some of the awful things that have happened in our lives work together for good? Paul says, we know all things work together for good because God has a purpose. A purpose for this world. A purpose for all of us. Paul gives the detail. Those whom Jesus foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed the image of his son. God is in the process of conforming us, transforming us into the model, our model, Jesus. As we have seen previously, the process of salvation has as its ultimate goal the restoration of the full, original image of God in all of us. That is what God has in mind for each of us from the moment we are born. Those who have found predestined he also called. Every one of us is called. Those who he called, he also justified. Believers are made right with God. Those he justified, he will glorify. That is, living in the presence of God as the restored image of God. Life is not haphazard. It is not rudderless. God has a plan, a program, a purpose every one of us. <clears throat> now, I must say immediately that there is a difference between purpose and reason. A reason makes a direct connection between two things. You have damage on the front of your car because you ran into the tree. That is reason. A purpose in this case relates to 
a long, big perspective, God's perspective, aspects of which we often cannot discern. We never want to say, well, God had a purpose in your child contracting a terrible disease. That seems to say there is an easily understood reason for your child's illness. That's an awful thing to say. But I think we can believe that the child's illness is part of God's great purpose, which we cannot understand now. One day, not today. Paul says, my goodness, in light of all this, if God is for us, who could be against us? We may go through turbulent times, we may suffer loss, we may feel alone in the spiritual desert, but if God is for us, who can be against us? We know all things work together for good because God loves us and has demonstrated his love. Earlier in Romans, Paul writes, God proves his love for us in that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. Here Paul says, He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him, with his son, also give us everything else? That is, if God has given us Jesus, what's he going to hold back? We know all things work together for good because nothing, nothing, Nothing can separate us from the love of God. How about hardship? No. Distress? No. Persecution? No. Famine, nakedness, peril, peril, violence? No. Our past? No. Our present circumstances? No. Our future? No. The powers that be? No. Death? No. Anything in all creation? No. Nothing can separate us the love of God. Yes, we can count on God to get us through the weeds. I think, though, that making these things real in our lives depends on a very important factor, something that is often dropped from our, our interpretation of this passage. It is far easier to accept that God is helping us through weeds if we love God, meaning obey God, yes, but more importantly, having a relationship with him through prayer, through fellowship, through church events, through reading scripture. When we are in touch with God, when we abide in him, when we know him and realize he knows everything about us, we are then able to trust God. He breaks down our walls. <laughs> As I was thinking about this passage, I recall the sage advice that poet Rainer Maria Wilke offered in his letters to a young poet. He writes, Be patient toward all that is unresolved in your heart and try to love the questions themselves. Like locked rooms and like books that are now written in a foreign tongue, do not now seek the answers which cannot be given you because you would not be able to live them. And the point is to live everything. To live everything. Live the questions now. Perhaps you will then gradually without noticing it live along some distant day into the answer. When we trust God when we know in our heart of hearts that he, he is who he claims to be, when we can go on without answers and live the questions, then we know we are living in the kingdom of heaven. We can honestly say with Paul, all things work together for good. Somehow, all things work together for good. Let us all pray that we can live the questions now knowing the answers will come in the fulfilled kingdom. Amen. Stand, please.
I'm going to pay attention to Tim this time. <laughs> questions and the knowledge that the Holy Spirit prays for you, that God knows you intimately, and that all things work together for good. And may God who searches the heart, Jesus whose love overcomes all things, and the Spirit who helps you in your weakness, continue to lead you and guide you in your daily journey and bring you joy. Amen. <laughs>